Hello, my name's Paddy and I'm a media production freelancer and photographer. I use an SLR. I see people going around with their camera phones. They've never even used Photoshop. They haven't got any fancy lenses. These pictures are looking pretty good. And I start wondering, is it really worth me having my camera and my lenses? I could sell them and buy three or four smartphones for the same money. Well, my partner just bought a Huawei P9 phone which has not one but two lenses and made by Leica no less. Any photographers out there will know that Leica are renowned for making very high quality and very expensive cameras and lenses. I think one lens deals with the luminescence, so the kind of shades of black and white shadows and such like. And the other lens deals with the chroma, the, the colour, and it combines them together to, according to the manufacturers, give you a, a superb quality image. We went on a walk in the woods and we thought we'd take some pictures with her new phone and my Canon 650 and a Tamron 1750 f2.8 lens, which for the money is one of the best you can get. I was kind of hoping that my camera would be noticeably better than her phone, but I also hoped that she'd get a good quality picture from the phone. We did some fairly unscientific tests and the first I thought we'd test was the bokeh which is a Japanese term, which means the quality of, of the out of focus bits of the image. Anyone who takes portraits will know that it's good to have the actual subject of the portrait in sharp focus, but to have the background blurred so it doesn't detract the attention of the viewer from the subject. The P9 claims to have depth of field control. The depth of field is, is depth of what's in focus. So you can get somebody's face in focus, or in this case here, the spider web in focus and the background out of focus. Well, you can see here on the left is the Canon picture shot at f2.8. The flowers and leaves in the background are very clearly out of focus. If I zoom right in to actual pixels, I think I may have shook the camera a little bit here or not got the focus perfect. But the web you can see is kind of in focus. The background is very much out of focus. You can see here at the bottom that the Canon has a lot more pixels than the P9. The images are bigger, so I can I can zoom in closer. I'll zoom in full size here on the P9. Now straight away, I'm seeing some suspicious looking things. Even if I zoom right out, I can see that the background isn't as out of focus as on the Canon picture, though the, the web is looking a lot better you can actually see that a lot more sharply. But there's bits here. These look like they've got some kind of digital blurring effect. This doesn't look like an optical effect. The web here is on the, on the same level. And in some places it's in focus, other places it's all blurred. So I think particularly here, this, this area, this looks like it's got some kind of digital blurring effect. So I think the P9's not just relying on its, its optical, effect of the actual lenses themselves. I think it's doing a bit of digital magic in the background there. This flower, out of focus flower, looks really horrible. It's not, it doesn't look like a real optical effect. And since it's closer to the camera than the leaves here, these leaves should be more out of focus if the web's in focus, but actually it's more blurred. So I'm very suspicious about this effect. The quality of the image is pretty good, but I think if you want good bokeh, good shallow depth of field pictures, I think you're better off with decent lens and a good enough camera. But like good photographers will tell you, it's, it's mostly down to the quality of the lens and the quality of the photographer as well, of course. So let's look at something else. HDR mode. What this does is it'll take a picture where there's very dark shadows, very bright highlights and mid-tones and it will make sure you can see details of all of that. It won't have sort of white bits and black bits, it will kind of have a decent shade in the dark areas and decent shades in the light areas so there won't be any silhouettes. So the P9's on the right here again and the Canon 650D's on the left. The Canon 650D's got an automatic HDR mode which takes three separate pictures and combines them in the camera to create one image. 
trouble is the depth of field on it is very shallow which is good for portraits but not good for a picture like this where I want to get several meters of depth. The detail on the trunk here is quite good. Um, in a normal picture that might just be silhouetted as black but in the HDR mode you can see the, the bark, the texture of the bark, it's pretty good. Let's have a look at the P9. There's still some detail in the trunk but it's quite dark and there's less detail than there was on the Canon. If I was going to do a, a good HDR picture on this for depth of field I'd have to do that manually on the Canon. I'd use a tripod, take three pictures and do things in Photoshop to get the effect I wanted. What's the bright areas like? Zoom into actual pixels. I think the detail is better on the Canon than on the, the P9 but it's not a bad picture on the P9 considering it's primarily a phone. I won't be getting any phone calls on my Canon and it's not the most expensive phone you can get either. You can spend several hundred pounds more on a phone and possibly not get a better camera. Let's just look at a normal landscape picture in the same woods. I shot the one on the Canon landscape and the P9 one is portrait, so it's not a fair comparison. Both were using automatic landscape modes. I think the P9s try to make this picture on the left a bit more contrasty. The, the shadows on the ground look stronger on the P9 than they do on the Canon, which for something you want to instantly share, the picture on the left does look more dramatic. If you want to put it into Photoshop and adjust things, I'd want to go for the Canon one. It has a kind of more real picture and you can adjust it to make it contrasty if you want. Interestingly, the Canon hasn't, if I look at the levels here, the Canon hasn't got the full range of shades from black to white. It's got some white, quite a lot of white there, but I need to drag that a little bit to actually get the full range of darks to lights. Once I've done that, the shadows and the trees are a lot more dark. I am getting a range of shades here. I could actually check the detail by... Oh, it's got a circle there, that's strange. Yeah, so there's some, there's some trunk detail stored there. Unfortunately, I've not been able to get a full-size image from the Huawei there, here, so it's not really a fair comparison. I'll just see if I've got any detail in the trunk there. A lot less, but that is because this picture's been sized down quite substantially. That is another advantage, of course, of a Canon. You pull the card out, put it in the computer, you're straight into Photoshop if you want to retouch things. On P9, it's not easy to get the card out at all. So you'd have to share it via a cloud system or something like that. So if you did want to retouch your pictures using another computer, that would be quite a hassle to get out of it. If you want to use an app to retouch it, it's in the phone already and it's, it's perfect for that. So obviously for social media sharing, your phone's going to be a lot better than an SLR. Lastly, I'm going to look at a Starburst, one of my favourite effects. If you get a very small aperture and look at a bright point of light with the camera, you will get a lovely Starburst effect. It's just down to the optical effects of the lens of light going through a small aperture. This was shot at f32, which is the smallest aperture the Tamron lens will do. You can see straight away it's a much stronger starburst than the P9's one. But the P9 has got some distinct rays on its starburst. Again, this picture is a small picture. It's definitely a very different optical effect, and I much prefer the Tamron lens. But it does show you can get some photographic effects with the P9. So in conclusion, I'm not going to throw away my SLR yet. I think the SLR is better. Quite apart from everything else, it's, it's easier to use as a camera. The, the shape's designed to, for taking pictures, not for making phone calls. You've got all the controls, manual focus, all those things. It's, it is so much easier to use and you can switch different lenses onto it. So it's, it, it, it's a much better photographic experience and people treat you like a photographer rather than somebody with a phone. 
And obviously it's a lot harder to take a selfie with an SLR. You can't stick it on a selfie stick and wave it around. So it's, it's horses for courses. It's, it's comparing not apples with oranges, it's comparing apples with cheese, really. Don't sell your SLR if you're enjoying using it, but there are certainly advantages in having a phone with a decent camera. The low light pictures on the P9 are remarkably good. It would be fair to recommend it over other phones that I haven't tried, but it is a very good camera and a phone and browser and everything else apps on it are certainly good enough. So I could recommend it for people wanting a camera and a phone at the same time. I hope that's been useful to you. Thanks for listening and enjoy your photography.